Then... <laughs> Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Now, today I am joined by Justin Howard of Movies Watch Daily. How are you doing today, man? What's up, man? Thanks for having me. Dude, it's such an honor. So you are also here on the YouTube world trying to do the horror thing like all of us that are we've been talking to recently. We have a pretty nice group chat we got going on, a really Absolutely. supportive community. So uh, what can you tell people about your channel if they haven't seen it yet? Okay, so the channel is Movie Watch Daily. My name is Justin. Um, my channel is kind of, it, it all centers around movies, but it really kind of goes all over the place. Like today I posted a movie review. Tomorrow I might do an unboxing of a, of an 80s retro toy the next move the next day i'm doing a, a blu-ray haul it's all over the all over the place but uh it all centers around horror nostalgia genre um just the stuff from the 70s uh, 70s 80s 90s all that good nostalgic type of stuff that we love Dude, the t the t2 stuff was awesome man yeah that that bust was so cool I, that's like my prized possession in my collection right now i'm pretty i'm pretty stoked on that yeah there's a whole unboxing of this uh really badass like battle worn t800 skull i was really stoked to get that yeah so if you guys you want to check it out real quick what you want to do is go down to his videos i got his link on here in the description make sure you're following him on social media make sure you subscribe to him on youtube check out that t2 video if you don't do any of the other things i just asked you to do <laughs> at least check that video out it's so awesome to see that t800 head as somebody that i've argued and we had this little discussion in our chat I think the Terminator 2 is hands down the best sequel of all time. If you're talking direct sequel from 1 to 2, I think Absolutely. Uh, Terminator 2 Judgment Day, the only one that even comes close to me is The Empire Strikes Back. But I uh -huh. still don't think that even holds a candle to what Terminator 2 did in comparison to Terminator 1. And you're a big uh -huh. T2 fan, correct? A hundred percent. And I'll, I'll even go so as far as to say I think Terminator 2 is the best action movie ever made. Mm -hmm. You know, that's pretty arguable compared to what's, came out now but the thing about that movie is just how innovative it was i mean it, james cameron say what you will about james cameron and his million avatar movies but uh he innovates with every single movie he makes whether it's through special effects or set pieces um he's just an innovator he likes to push the boundaries and nobody had seen anything like that you know what right. i mean and so. i completely consider terminator 2 a horror movie as well man yeah it's an action movie but man yeah the team 1000 is a, he's a it's a He's a slasher, man. Right. Like and especially, the, oh, dude. With the his finger into the thing. eye. Yes. Oh, yeah. dude, I totally consider that. That dude's a and, slasher, man. And Cameron even said. Uh-huh. When he was especially. writing the first Terminator, that he was trying to write the sci-fi Michael Myers, the sci-fi right. Halloween. Right. Exactly. In the first one, he's really ominous, man. He is, and he has no personality, like just built for one thing, you know what I mean? Yep. And, and uh, indiscriminate killing and that he does. Yeah. You know? well, see, and Love Terminator it. 2 to me is one of the great movies that it's an action movie. It's a horror movie. It's got uh -huh. drama to it. You know, right. Terminator 2 may have been the first movie I ever cried at. You know, I know now why you cry. You oh, know, then dude. he gives him the thumbs it, up as he's going it down. Still gets me. I'll it still pull up me, that man. scene on, uh, I'll still pull up that scene on YouTube every once in a while. And it's still, uh, it still gets me, man. It, it really yeah. does. It's just, just it's how brilliant. Like, I order you not to go. I order you not I order to not go. To, I know, like, dude. And, dude, and so... they found the casting director just found Edward Furlong at like a uh, like a little, I forget what it was called. He just, they happened to just spot Edward Furlong in the wild and just said, do you want to be in a movie? And just kicked his career. It's, it's a pretty hilarious. cool story. It's a pretty cool story. Yeah. And then so, he ended up playing the crow in the crow four. Oh my God. How that. Let's not even. Oh my god! <laughs> yes. That's okay, one of the most ridiculous thing I, I've ever seen. Is Edward talk about the like the worst miscasting? I, I that's like the biggest casting blunder I've ever seen in a movie. I, I got I a couple buddies who dig it, but uh, Edward Furlong is not the crow. No man, no that that series went way down after the first one anyway. But we won't even get oh, into yeah. that. Um, so I want everybody to check out your channel so they know what you're doing right now, man. And we know you're Absolutely. doing reviews and stuff in the future. But now I want to take it back to the past, Justin. And I want to talk about how horror started for you. And mm -hmm. your first horror movie, my friend, was? The Gate. 1987's. I can't really see it. Is it in the frame there? It is. Yep. <laughs> the Gate, yeah. Um, this movie, uh, you know, my intro to horror elements could go back 
even further. If we're talking about even when I was a little tiny kid, like watching scary ass Disney movies like Pinocchio or even Wizard of Oz had some really terrible, terrible, like terrifying moments. But when it comes down to the first horror movie I ever saw that freaked me out, it was The Gate. Um, and I saw it on a local station. We used to have a, a thing that used to play. Uh, um, it was like our local PBS station or local affiliate. And they had a thing called Day Scream Theater. I'm not sure if it was a national thing or not, but they used to play horror movies. I'm sure they were chopped to hell when they when they played them on uh, on TV. But uh, The Gate, man, from beginning to end, is just classic. And I just watched it again last night uh, for the first time in a long time. And there's just so much to dive into uh, from talking about The Gate. Pray it's not too late, man. I totally oh my God. agree. This is one of those movies that, as a kid, totally blew my mind. Uh -huh. And to me, as a kid, this was the horror version of Labyrinth with all the little things that were running around. Sure. Like, yeah. For some reason, to this day, I still lump the gate and Labyrinth in together. I think I used to watch them like double feature when I was a kid yeah. a lot. So, um, they, the similar themes uh, for sure. Yeah. Do you remember who you were with the first time that you watched it, Justin? I watched it by myself. I was just a kid at that point. At that point, I was an only child. I have a little sister, but I'm older than her, so she wasn't around. Um, just me left to my own devices with the remote control watching, uh, watching TV. I happened to stumble upon it. And uh, I'm sure I stumbled on it in the middle. I don't even know if I saw the whole movie the first time. But what sticks out to me, all I remember as a kid um, was that scene when he has the eyeball in his hand. And I, it just scared the living shit out of me. And when he stabs it with the glass, I had never seen anything like that, ever. I had never seen anything like that. Um, and it just absolutely, it blew my mind. And that's such a great scene, such an amazing uh, scene, because the yeah. practical effects on that still look good. I mean, when you watch it now, you can tell it's a yeah. different hand. But it's right. still great, man. I love that right. scene. Um, yeah. That's actually what I was just about to ask you. Which scene affected you the most? Would you consider uh -huh. that to be the scene? Um, you know, that's the, I, that, that's the image that I always, uh, that I always remembered. I remember when I first started to get into buying movies, like later in life in my teens and stuff, I didn't know what the movie was, but I remembered mm -hmm. that image. You know, that happens with a lot of movies that we see as oh, kids. Yeah. We're like, what the hell was that movie? And you kind of have to rediscover them. Um, and that's the scene that stuck out to me, but then rewatching it, there's so many scenes that I remember just being scared shitless of, you know, the scene where the dad gets his face uh, crushed in and there's so many scary moments. Um, they, they, I, and, and watching now that I've seen so many other movies, uh, the gate borrowed from <laughs> quite a few movies too. Um, yeah. Especially like the nightmare on Elm street with the wall stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, it's just whole movie. Once it gets rolling uh, and it does start off pretty quick. The movie moves pretty quickly. Oh, the pacing's uh, so great. It really is, yeah, starting out with the dream sequence. Everything is set up really nicely. Um, first, you know, you have the scene where he's walking around. It's kind of dreamlike. You don't really know what's, uh, what's going on, and you slowly realizes he's having, um, having a dream. And at that point, the, the evil has already kind of started to infiltrate the house. Yeah. You know, it's already happening. Um, it's just so cool. Little Steven Dorff. That's Steven Dorff in that movie, which is crazy. It is. Little Glenn is Steven Dorff, man. I know. Yeah. One scene that always got me from this movie, man, and nobody ever talks about this scene, but when the bugs break the window and the bugs are yeah. coming in and he's freaked yeah. out, like that scene always got me when I was a kid, man. I've always had an irrational uh -huh. fear of bugs because I have a right. bee allergy. So I think uh -huh. that scene scared me just for that reason alone, man. Well, that was another sequence that was done really, really well. It looked like they had kind of just projected like shadows on the wall or something, but mm -hmm. it was really effective. They looked, the moths looked massive. Um, yeah. Scares the shit out of him. He goes crying to his sister. He's a little mm -hmm. whiny in that movie, huh? Oh, yeah, Glenn. Yeah. He's There's like, definitely like, certain on, points where dude. you're like, oh, my God, let them we take him. We need to call mom. We need to call mom. <laughs> it's like, come oh, on, dude. You were talking in the about house the right now. You were talking about that dad scene. And for those of you that have never seen The Gate, you really should watch it. But the audio you heard at the beginning is a scene that he was talking about with the dad's face. You know, you've been naughty. Like, that's, yeah. that's the shit that I remember from uh -huh. this movie, man. Like, that's one right. scene that you uh, – that's the one that stuck with me the most. That was another uh -huh. one that affected me a lot. And I think that scene is so well done. It's terrifying. Because, and he has that jubilation of, Mom and Dad, and he runs out and right. he's hugging them. And the dad's hand slowly right. go to his neck, you know? Right. 
there's a there's so many things and this is the case with so many horror movies like um, I think we're probably pretty similar in age. I was born in 82. So uh, mm -hmm. back then in the late 80s, early 90s, the movies that were made, like I wouldn't say this is necessarily made for kids, but it's not like a hard R movie. Movies used to take risks as far as like movies that were geared toward the younger audience. So mm -hmm. like nowadays, uh, I would consider this kind of an intro horror movie, but oh, it's still sure. pretty gnarly, you know. Um, but there's some really gnarly stuff in that movie uh, that I just don't think would be in a movie geared towards kids, like that face scene and some of the terrifying scene, the scenes with the hand reaching underneath uh, the bed to grab them and stuff, those big arms. Uh, it, it's just some really terrifying moments. There really is. And they're all yeah, really man. well done. Yeah. And it's funny because that hand under the bed, that's another one that really scared me. Because at this oh, point, man. the sister, you know, she's the older protective sister and it grabs right. her. You know, uh -huh. So that's now she realizes shit's going down too, man. Right, absolutely. It's that's that's when she kind of like realizes there's something going on. Although, when they're are we just going full spoiler as we talk about the movie? If you haven't seen it by now, we can spoil this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because I was gonna say like at the beginning, towards the beginning of the movie, they do that seance. Um, I guess we should we do. I don't know if you want to do like a plot synopsis, but basically, the the once the portal is open, you know, the evil is unleashed. But um, when they raise, they do the little seance thing, kind of like from the craft where he starts to raise up and he floats in the air. Didn't you feel like they should have been freaking out a little bit more at that point? Like, That's what I'm saying. Like everybody's doing it like it's a normal everyday thing, right? You know, this kid's floating, floating in above the him, and they're all just like. Then you end and, up having like the twins that hide in the closet, like, right? <laughs> Yeah, but it's I'm like, with you, man. Like that's totally a, a, a scene in the movie where you're like, they sure are taking this pretty well. Well, and it was all it was a really clever way that they went about telling the story because, like I said, it starts out with the dream sequence. Something's obviously weird, but you don't know, you know, what's going on. They cut to the scene in the backyard, and you see the big hole in the yard. So they're obviously yeah. telling you like something's weird uh, with that. But then you know the best friend, that awesome metal scene that he goes through when he's singing the metal song. And he realizes there's that incantation that that fully realizes the uh, um, yeah when he plays it backwards. Spin the record um, backwards. <laughs> yeah, and that was during that whole time uh, of like the whole satanic panic you know craze where mm -hmm. parents just thought that you know metal music and horror movies were just going to ruin the youth and everybody's going to be worshiping Satan because they listened to a fucking Ozzy Osbourne album or something. You know what I mean? So. Um, it's really interesting how they played into that and in that and that specific time. Uh, it was really imagine relevant. those parents listening to like "As I Lay Dying" or "Poison the Right." Well. They didn't even know what was going to come. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's really it's it's really wild. Right. So when you're sitting around hanging out and for some reason someone just brings up the gate out of nowhere, mm -hmm. Justin, what's the first thing that pops in your head when you think of the gate? Um. After watching it again, the, the, the standout for me that blew me away from moment to moment was first the, the practical effects, mm -hmm. uh, the effects in this movie uh, and how many effect shots. There's so many effects sequences. I didn't have a chance to look up the budget. Um, it's obviously a lower budget movie, but what they were able to do with their budget is absolutely incredible because they and the way the, the director mixed the elements because. Um, there were so many overlays and composite shots that looked really seamless for the time. Yeah. You know, it, it looked really good. Um, th there were some points where I could tell they had kind of like superimposed like guys in suits, you know, because it didn't look like to me like it was all stop motion, right? No, it there, like there's, there's definitely some... some scenes. Like when he falls down into the hole and yeah. he sees him for the first time, he like waves at him. And yeah. the other one comes up and bites him and he slaps it away. You can yeah. see that that's definitely a guy in a suit when he's rolling yeah. off. But it's awesome. The, I'm 100% right. on board with you. The, the effects of this movie definitely hold up. They're definitely right. still awesome. And I love that whole sequence, too. It's so wild. Yeah. Yeah, so absolutely. We, we know what the first thing that pops in your head is. We know which scene affected you the most. But now after a rewatch, what would you say your favorite scene from the movie is? Oh God, the most impactful scene is probably towards, uh, man, there's a lot. That's a, that's a good question. That really is a good question. Um, the whole movie's awesome. The third act really takes off. Um, and one scene that really I couldn't believe as far as going back to the effects and how uh, amazing it was when everything starts to go batshit 
is the sequence when the main demon pops out of the floor. It goes to that big yes. wide shot. It just looks incredible. Um, it looks really, really badass. And he's just scared. You know, the kids, the old dwarf is on top of the balcony. He's like, and they have that moment too, which is kind of strange. I don't know how you interpreted that moment between when the big demon guy comes up, they almost have like a moment or something. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's funny because like at this point, he knows, Glenn knows how he's going to, I don't want to give away what happens here, but yeah. he knows from an earlier plot what he has to do. Right. And another scene in this area that's so terrifying is Terry gets taken away, his friend. The monster comes out of the wall. I know. And pulls him back into the wall. Yeah. And that's another scene that really scared the shit out of me as a kid because the editing is flawless. How, it you is. know, Glenn runs over and it's just the wall again. Uh -huh. That's another scene that really got me as a kid, man. I forgot they did Terry like that too, man. That was that was kind of messed up. <laughs> yeah, know? dude. Um, so we talked about which scene affected you the most, and we talked about your favorite scene. So we know a lot about how you feel about the gate, your first mm -hmm. horror movie. But now, my friend, I'm gonna throw a curveball at you. I'm gonna okay. go scream on you here for a second. Okay. What's your favorite scary movie? <laughs> what is your favorite horror movie of all time? That is a that's a tough one, and honestly, it kind of depends. Uh, that's a tough. <laughs> that's a really really tough one. Now we could go. You, there's so many categories you could go to, like the best well made one or the one you you rewatch the most. Um, this See, is kind that's of that's why I say favorite. I never say which one do you yeah. think is the best because my best right. and my favorite are two completely different horror films. My favorite will always be House from 86. Uh -huh. That will Great always movie. be my favorite. But I think the best horror movie ever made when it comes to being the best movie is the original Nightmare on Elm Street. I think that's the best horror movie ever made. If you take away the last five minutes mm -hmm. of that movie with that dumb fucking Freddy car and the blow-up doll getting pulled through the window, I think it's the best yeah. movie ever made. I don't know what they were thinking with that to leave with that scene at the end, but uh, it, you're right. It is a flawless movie. If I had to go best, as far as like what I view as the most effective horror movie, I would probably say the shining, but okay. favorite hands down, most rewatch cabin fever is the movie that I've probably watched the most. I know it's not a classic horror. Um, right or strong, it, man. It, it's uh, something about that movie. I, I just, it's so rewatchable. It's just so rewatchable. Um, that's Spoiler probably the alert, one for anybody that hasn't seen Cabin Fever. Pause or fast forward thirteen seconds. Doesn't that isn't that the one where Ryder Strong at the end dies in the in the river? He gets thrown in the river and then he ends up. Yeah, yeah. Well, so that's how he gets. Dark, how he gets it. That's how he dark gets ass it. He, he falls in there. Yeah, it gets really bad. Well, the one guy that thinks he made it, the one guy that thinks he made it, he, I made it. He comes out with his little six pack of beer. Um, and he doesn't have the disease and then he gets shot. But, um, yeah, I know that Eli Roth for some reason is pretty polarizing in, uh, a lot of the, uh, the horror circles that I'm in either you love, you love it, you love his movies or, or you don't, you know, but Hostel and Cabin Fever are the two horror movies that I've rewatched the most. A, cl a close one would probably Return of the Living Dead 2. That's probably right up there. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that's it's so hard to pick one, man. Well, see, it and really I think that is. cabin fever thing. I think that's totally an homage to Night of the Living Dead when he comes out like I sure. made it, I'm safe, and they shoot him anyway. Right. Oh, you know? uh, exactly. Yeah, there's yeah. yeah I love films packed with I love dark like endings, man. I think if you mm -hmm. do a dark ending right, like some mm -hmm. of the, my favorite movies have the darkest endings, like American Werewolf in London. That's a uh -huh. depressing ending to that movie. It is Night of the Living Dead. That's a depressing uh -huh. ass ending. The Mist depressing well the, well the reason all those movies that you just mentioned especially like the, the 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 aspect of like zombie movies when you lose the people you love and you have to watch them die or you have to kill them like when they and of course the mist is crazy when people get sucked and the the, the ending of the movie um is is obviously very bleak but uh the character stuff like that the the, the films with the most like the emotional weight um, yeah. are what what makes those movies so memorable you know, oh, 100 percent. So, yeah. Yeah. All right, man. Not, well, not... before we go, I we always end these with the same question. We're going to go back to the gate and we're going to mm -hmm. give it a skull count. Zero being the okay. worst, five being the best. Now, we're not ranking these on overall production, quality of acting. We're not yeah. critics right now. We're just ranking this on what it means to you 
and how it mm -hmm. affected you. So zero out of five skulls, you can use half and quarter skulls. What okay. What's your ranking of the gate be? 3.5. I'm going to give Perfect. it a 3.5. Yeah. yeah. Right, it's, right not, it's, not the, it's not the best thing I've ever seen. It's definitely above average, and it rides kind of right in the middle, you know, between the middle and as, as good as it's going to get, you know, especially yeah. for its time. I think, I think it sits pretty firmly at 3.5. Perfect yeah. ranking. Um, well, and like I said, everybody, I said at the beginning, I'm going to throw this reminder out to you again. Please make sure you're clicking the links down here in the description, showing him some love. Make sure you're following the channel. It's a lot of fun over there. I enjoy it. Like I said, we talk every day. It's a whole lot of fun. I support everything he does. I hope you guys do as well. So um, don't go anywhere, Justin. I got a couple more questions for you. Okay. Everybody else, as always, keep talking horror. Stay what you are, and we'll see you guys soon.